So this video is looking at stopping distances and basically this is the total distance travelled by a vehicle after the driver sees a hazard and then the vehicle comes to a complete stop. And it's made out of two different distances. You've got the thinking distance, which is before the brakes are applied, and then once the brakes have been applied we're then looking at the braking distance. Now, uh, the thinking distance can be affected by tiredness, distractions, so that's including people looking at their mobile phones and texting, maybe playing with the radio, alcohol, and also many drugs as well. So this can include both the legal drugs and legal drugs as well. Okay, so the other thing that really affects the thinking distance is how fast the car is going. If it's going quicker, the car's going to travel further before the driver applies the brakes. But once it has braked, Things that might affect that include the surface of the road, so if it's wet or icy, if it's muddy, that's going to reduce the friction between the tyres and the road, and also how good a condition the tyres are in and the condition of the brakes. And the stopping distance is equal to the thinking distance plus the braking distance. Now an experiment that you could have a go at doing, maybe in school with your friends, is you could drop a ruler through the fingers of another person and you could record the distance that the ruler falls, which is then related to the reaction time. Effectively, if they've got a quicker reaction time, the ruler's not going to drop as far. Question 8 is a bit of revision, and basically uh, speed is equal to the distance divided by the time, and that's something that you know about. And what's then the relationship between the distance and speed? Well, basically, the speed is related to the distance and they're directly proportional. Okay, if you've got something which is going twice as fast, it's going to go twice the distance. But when we're looking at kinetic energy, kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. And the work done by the brakes is equal to the kinetic energy of that vehicle. Okay, because effectively, as a force is applied over a distance by the brakes, that's going to transfer the kinetic energy from that store into the thermal store of the brakes and the surroundings. Now, this one over here, again, gets quite advanced, but what we're saying is that the work done is equal to the force times the distance, and the kinetic energy is a half mv squared, and because the work done is equal to the size of the kinetic energy, we can say that the force times the distance is equal to a half mv squared, and provided we've got a constant force by the brakes, the car stays at a constant mass, and a half is just a constant, s is proportional to v squared. So what that means, is that if you were to go twice as fast, we would not just double the distance, the braking distance, we'd actually multiply it by four. If you were going 10 times as fast, your braking distance would be 100 times bigger, 10 times 10. So that's not a, lin that's not a proportional relationship, it's uh, something where the stopping distance increases proportional to the velocity squared. So, um, just a bit there about stopping distances of vehicles.